Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is just a quick bonus video. Um, it is quite late at night, so I am whispering a little bit, but I'm quite close to the mic, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, this is a quick one, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to make this little simple compass you can see in the top right hand corner. All it does is essentially it takes the uh, character's direction or rotation and just updates the, the UI, the HUD just to accommodate that. Obviously I've made this out of just some basic like lines and arrows and zeros and stuff like that. Um, I'll build up, I'll build on top of this, uh, I'll make it look a little bit nicer and do it at some point in the future of a new video but this is just a little quick bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna delete all of that Okay, so once you've deleted, <laughs> well, um, I was going to say once you've deleted everything, but you don't need to because you're going to start fresh. Um, right, now I've deleted everything. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. And we'll just call this HUD. Uh, nice and simple. And then we're, we're going to want to add this HUD to our screen. So let's go to our third person character, which is just here. Um, just for reference, I've opened up a blank template and I've gone to content, third, pass, <laughs> third person BP and blueprints. I've gone into the character and this is just the one with like the jump and the movement and all that sort of stuff in it. Let's come up to the top here and if we right click, we get the option to create uh, widget. Select class, your HUD should appear there. So we want to click that. Now, because we're creating this HUD and we're going to put it on the screen, we just want to make a reference to it just so then we can use it going forward. And let's just set this to HUD ref. Nice and simple. And then from this reference, we just want to add that to the viewport then. So this is, this is actually adding it to the screen. And then to do all this, we want to do this at the begin play. So uh, we want to do this right at the beginning of the game when we press start. Um, so that's that for now. If we then go into the HUD, let's just test that everything's working. Drag a text on, press compile and press play. You can see you've got text on the screen, so that's working. Um, with that text now, what you want to do is you want to change the anchor. Um, so you want to click on this one. That'll move the anchor to the top. You also want to press control and click the same one. And that'll move it and you want to do it again and hold shift and that changes the alignment so now it's center aligned um, with that I'm just going to change the justification on the appearance to center as well just to make sure and then I'm going to change the text the text I'm actually going to put to like the like the right arrow or the more and more than sign uh, three like little dashes or um, whatever uh, a space, a zero, a space, two dashes, and then two arrows again. And you're going to get this, let's move it down, you're just going to get this little fake arrow looking thing. Um, by moving it down I've actually changed the position X, I'm just going to reset that to zero so it's centered, and then the position Y is actually at 300, don't worry about that for now, but now I've got an arrow. So for us to be able to move this arrow, um, we're going to need to change it to a variable and if you really want to you can put arrow in the name just so you've got a reference to it. Uh, once you've done that let's go to the graph um, and what we want to do is we're going to need to actually let's get rid of the tick and let's get rid of the pre-construct. Um, when we first build this HUD we want to get a reference to our player so what we're going to do is we're going to get a player character and that's gonna that's gonna tell you again to find whatever player you are playing as from the return value you want to cast that to and then third person character and essentially what you're doing here is you're taking your your actual character cast into its blueprint and then now from the blueprint you can access any data within it so what we want to do then is promote that to a variable so then we're creating a reference to all the data within your character and now we can use that in the HUD so we're going to use the rotation for example. So now um, whenever we update 
um, the movement in the character we want to trigger an update to our HUD so for that I'm going to do a custom event and I'm going to call this update I get an arrow, update arrow or you know you make that more descriptive but update arrow we want to call that every time we move so every so let's go over to our third person character blueprint the one that we put our hood in and if we move down over here we'll see movement input now essentially every time this is triggered and this is triggered we're moving left or right or we're moving forward and back so ideally what we want to do is we want to take our hood reference which we made earlier here um, and the reason we want to take our hood reference is because we've just created this custom event inside the hood which we want to call take the hood reference drop it down here let's get it and then we want to actually do update arrow so if we drag this over here and tag it onto the end of uh, the add movement and let's press ctrl w and duplicate that and do the same for when we move left or right so now what we've done is every time we move forward or back or left or right we're updating the arrow on the screen um, obviously oh, this this can't be found is because we've not pressed compile once we've compiled the HUD this warning will go away done we will no longer need the third person character okay so we want to update the arrow but we want to update it with something so what we actually want to update is is angle so if we type in angle uh, the one that comes up is set render transform angle and if you want to have a mess around with this before you do this go to the designer so let make sure your text is selected scroll all the way down and the render transform you've got angle underneath the transform and when you mess with this the text rotates on the screen so we just want to link this to our character's rotation and then we've basically got a compass so let's nip back to the graph so we've got the set render transform and we need this angle to equal our character uh, so because we already got a reference to our character let's drag that get uh, the as third person character and essentially what we want to do is get the world uh, rotation rotation now Realistically, you could probably pick any one of these, but I'm just going to pick the capsule component. I'm going to, whoop. I'm going to loop all these underneath each other. And essentially, if you want to debug this, um, you could do uh, a print string, uh, just to print whatever this is showing. And if we compile now and play, every time we move, you can see that that Y rotation on the screen is always updating so we know you know we know everything's working so far so let's get rid of the string if you right click on this rotator and split you'll get the values x y and z and um, I know on the screen it actually came up as y but that's actually wrong we're actually rotating on the z I know it's weird but go with it and then what you can do you can just plug that straight into the angle plug this into your update arrow press compile press play and then every time you move you get not exactly what you wanted to be fair. And uh, do, do, do what have we got? What have we done here? Oh yeah, of course. Um, we've not actually put a reference to what we want to change the angle of. Uh, so naturally, that it's changing the entire hood itself. So it's rotating the whole hood. Uh, we want to grab the arrow and plug this into the target. When you're rushing through these tutorials, you f tend to forget things. But arrow is the target. We want to target the arrow to change its angle. So when you press compile and play, now your arrow stays stationary, but it changes depending on where you're looking or where your character is moving. Now, just to complete this, what you can do is depending on where you want to position your stuff in the world, you can click on your arrow, press Control and W. You've now created another, um, another text. Uh, essentially what you want to do is you want to shift hold and control click get that in the center um, the center sorry the Y position of the arrow is 300 so if we go to say 200 we're going to be above it you can change your text now to north or N whatever you prefer with that you can press control W and do that again 
but this time we're going to change it to south and the position Y on this is going to be 400 uh, control Y again let's get another one let's call this one east Ooh. east and we're going to set this to oh let's change the anchor first we're going to change this to 300 and this time we're going to set it over by maybe 120 why not and then again we can copy that we can set this to west and let's set this to Center to first, uh, let's say minus 120, obviously, and then we'll go down to 300. So now you've got north, east, south, west, press player, and there you go, you've got a compass. And if you want some more dramatic flow, you can add the north, east, south, west, uh, sorry, the south, east, and south, west, and north, east, north, west, in between. Uh, for the effect that I had, what I did was I took the north, for example, I centered it, dropped it down to to seven five something like that or two fifty whatever move it over by I don't know seventy five or maybe eighty something seventy five just look good change that to north east however what I did is I changed the font a little bit maybe down to sixteen and change the uh, typeface to regular and that just made it a bit smaller so it's not as bold as the others and then you're good to go so if that helped give me a like give me a subscribe and i'll see you in the next little quick one thanks